How's it going everybody? My name is Brandon Sig with BNA Studios and today I will be teaching you guys how to do the Hancock tutorial. Uh, that's basically just flying down from the sky, landing on the concrete, concrete going all over the place. So this is what it looks like. Alright, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to go find a radioactive spider or something that can make you fly and then get a camera and then just show yourself flying. Um, that's actually the harder way of doing it. Today we'll actually be doing the easier way with After Effects and Video Copilot. Alright, so when you first open After Effects, you'll come up with something like this. Uh, they'll have like all your recent projects, they'll have a whole bunch of other buttons that I have there that I never push. Um, so what you're just going to do is push close, because I never use those. Alright, so go ahead and import your footage. Uh, mine just happens to be in pictures and the date that I imported it. So go ahead and import that in, and once you get that in, go ahead and drag it to the timeline and it'll create a new composition for you. So when you go out and film, make sure that you have a frame, at least one frame, where there's nothing in it that moves. Um, because it's very hard to play with something where there's a lot of movement. So just make it easier on yourself, make no movement, uh, and then what you're going to do is just keyframe where nothing's moving in it. And how you do that is you right click your footage that you have in there, and you click time, and then freeze frame. And basically that just makes it, no matter where you move your cursor on that clip, it's basically that frame that your cursor was on. It's very nice. I used to render out JPEGs in After Effects so I could use it, but uh, just using that is a lot easier. So now that we've already freeze framed, let's go ahead and drag the original clip back down to the timeline. And uh, let's actually rename that uh, uh, freeze frame. I came up with that myself. Alright, so now that we have the original clip back in there, uh, let's go ahead and fast forward to when I actually jump. Sorry, it takes me a while. I must have, like, Thor's hammer in my backpack. Alright, so now that you've gotten to the way you jump, let's go ahead and get the yellow marker and drag it up to where your, uh, your cursor is, and then go ahead and right-click that and trim to work area. This basically just makes your workspace a lot smaller so it's easier to work. So we'll go ahead and go by keyframes uh, just to select where the highest point of me jumping is because you know I'm so happy. Uh, just got just got the news that I have some Twinkies at home so pretty excited to eat those. And then right click, time, freeze frame again. And then we'll go ahead and rename that to fly. And now we're flying. Uh, that's that's it. We're, we're done with the tutorial. <laughs> just kidding. So now we're going to select our mask tool. Now you can either scroll in if you have a mouse, you can push Control or Command Plus uh, to zoom in. And you're probably wondering, why my video looks like crap? I shot it with a DSLR, it shouldn't look this crappy. Well, uh, just uh, go ahead and click this, uh, make it full resolution instead of quarter. All right, so now that we can see what we're about to rotoscope, go ahead and get your mask tool like we already did and outline yourself. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this isn't going to be for like Paramount Pictures or anything, so uh, just kind of just kind of make an outline, I guess. All right, so once you're done with masking, uh, it's all nice and, and beautiful. So you're going to have to either decide if you want him to come up from the background or come down just from the frame. Uh, it's up to you, but either way you're going to have to position and scale. So what you do is you select the fly layer and you hit P for position. Uh, and then you go ahead and hit the time watch and then you hit S for scale and hit the time watch on that. Alright, so we'll go ahead and shrink me down. Uh, that's all about perspective. He's far away so he's going to be smaller. Uh, so we're going to shrink him down and then we're going to move him we're going to move him up. We're going to go Actually, we're going to go forward a few frames, and then we're going to be moving me up. Then I'll go ahead and move forward a few frames, and then move me over just a little bit to the right. And then we'll move forward just a few frames, and then, because it's a lot, it's going to be a lot faster than it was in the background, because it's perspective. Uh, so about two, meh, about three or four frames, and then we'll go ahead and move me down. Uh, about right there, that's fine. It's getting me up just a little bit. Alright, so now we'll drag our original footage again to the timeline. Um, and basically we'll get back to where I actually start running. Once you have where you start running, you can go ahead and click Command or Control Shift D. And it will go ahead and split the clip, uh, delete the previous clip, and then that clip will start where your playhead is. So as soon as your fly clip actually stops flying, you want to go ahead and put your moving footage right where he stops moving. 
So now we want to add a motion blur because he's flying. When you're flying, there's motion. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go to uh, select your fly layer and go to effect blur and sharpen and then directional. So then you want to point this downward because he's flying upward and then you want to increase the blur length up. And when he's starting to land, he will stop uh, his flight. He won't stop completely, but he'll slow down. So you're going to keyframe his uh, his blur. So you're going to time watch the blur lengthen and then just go a uh, few frames forward and then shrink it to like 30 to 40 blurs less. So the next step is something that you would either create in 3ds Max or you can go into Google and search, uh, I don't know, Cracked Ground, PNG, or you could go to Video Copilot and they have it in their pack of amazing pre-keyed footage. And if you guys are major editors, which maybe some of you guys are, uh, if you're looking this up, um, you, you guys, as as you guys continue onto your path of editor or graphic designer, whatever you're doing, you'll soon collect this uh, this hard drive uh, of a whole bunch of pre-keyed footage, a whole bunch of S effects, a whole bunch of VFX. Um, that that'll just help you edit. Um, so. If you don't have these, just uh, work and save, or I don't know, ask for it for Christmas or something for your mother or something. Uh, just make sure you have a hard drive so you can put them on because <laughs> losing them would really suck. So in my video copilot folder, I will go to textures, and then I will go to cracked, and then I will click ground cracked 2 and ground cracked 9. So go ahead and drag that above fly on the timeline. So now you're probably like, oh my gosh, why is it gray? Oh my gosh, where's my footage? Well, don't worry, you just right click blending and then hard light and then just scale that down to what you would think he would make from landing from the sky and then drag in the other one uh do the same thing uh hard light and then basically this is just a softer crack so i'll have my hard edges on the ground then the soft cracked edges as well boom we got cracked cement okay so now you want to select one of them and then control click the other and then right click pre-compose and we're going to call this cracked ground click OK and it will do that for some stupid reason go ahead and right click it again and then hard light alright so now that we have all that we're gonna go ahead and make a mask yay so you could either right click right here you go up to layer new solid uh, we're gonna go ahead and make that black uh, you can make it comp size doesn't matter uh, go ahead and name it mask hit OK so once you have that, uh, what you're going to do is uh, unsee that and then get your mask tool. And it's okay, just make sure that mask layer is selected. And then you're going to outline yourself. It doesn't have to be per be perfect again, uh, just, just do your best. Alright, so once you have your mask, uh, what you want to do is click MM on mask. And then that will bring up the time watches and then just select, click all of them and then just go frame by frame by frame or frame by every five frames whatever and then just move the masks uh to y to what where you move all right so now that we did that we're also going to add a mask to this car because uh it creates depth and you know crumbs and all that concrete won't go over the car so it'll be behind the car so we're going to go ahead and create a mask for that as well so now that we went ahead and masked all the stuff that we needed to keyframed everything uh, we're going to go ahead and add our debris effects of video copilot um, so go ahead and do that me i'm just really selecting uh, but if you're ever doing this for somebody you really need to take time to see you know thick or uh, not as thick um, i have a i have a debris i guess you could say but when you do this, you're going to want to have a small one, a thick one, and a medium one. So basically, this will create depth in your debris. So go ahead and do that, because then it will just look more realistic. Because there's more debris, there's small debris, pebbles, there's big debris, and there's medium. So once you have that, you're also going to want to get uh, some dirt charges that Video Copilot gives out in their Action Essentials 2 as well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get two of those, uh, one lighter, one darker. We're going to go ahead and put the darker one in front, smaller one, just not directly behind behind it, but a little bit to the left. Uh, this gives the dirt a little bit more depth to it as well. So once you have all of the things in there, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your uh, debris, your solid debris chunks that bounce. You're going to want to select them all and then right-click, pre-compose them. We'll call them debris. 
click 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 OK and then also get your dirt and also pre-compose that one and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to command or control D uh, the mask that you created and then um, you can click this toggle button uh, it was unclocked unclicked for me before uh, go ahead and click that will show up this little thing and then you select that and then you click alpha inverted mask uh, make sure though that your your pre-compositions are actually directly under the mask because then it wouldn't work okie doke um, then you're gonna duplicate this mask again put it above dirt and then make this you know like we did before okay and except you're like oh my gosh what what why why is that happening to which I will say don't fret my friend okay here's all we have to do so at the beginning you can select all of these masks T and lower down it to 0% okay now we're behind the explosion or the whatever make sure you click this time watch okay oh my gosh where are we well as the debris clears our hero emerges from the smoke from the debris Okay, now we render this, see what it looks like. It's beautiful. All right, so now that we have that, you're gonna go ahead and create a uh, right click, new adjustment layer, and then go to effect, uh, video copilot, uh, optical flares, and then wait for that to load, and then click options, and then select the optical flare that you want. We're gonna make a little bit of yellow, Actually, we're going to make it blue. Uh, go ahead and put that onto the headlight. Now basically, uh, hit Command D to duplicate that. And then uh, collect, select the target, XY position target. And then move it to the other side, or the other headlight. And then that will be on that one. And so then you just select both of them and command shift D to cut, move them over so it actually looks like the car lights are going on because it's an alarm. So that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. Um, if you liked it, uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. If you want to go ahead and see um, a sound for this clip, uh, because without sound, video is nothing. Um, sound makes video everything. So if you want to see the sound, because right now the sound is horrible, uh, but if you want to go see how I did this, how I do, how I can do the sound to make it improve, go ahead and like this up, comment, and then I'll go ahead and do that for you guys. So until next time, stay awesome, guys.